हेलो यूर वॉचिंग लेफ्ट राइट इन सेंटर आई एम निधि राजदार जुमला जीवी कोविड स्प्रेडर स्नूप गेट ऑल दीज एक्सप्रेशन इन वर्ड हैव ज्वाइंट अदर वर्ड्स लाइक अशेम अब्यूज बिट्रेड करप्ट ड्रामा हिपोक्रेसी एंड इनकॉम्पिटेंट इन अ लॉन्ग लिस्ट ऑफ वर्ड हैव नाउ बिन डीम्ड अनफिट फॉर पार्लियामेंट अहेड ऑफ द न्यू सेशन दैट स्टार्ट ऑन मंडे दिस इज part of a booklet that, that the lok sabha has come out with on unpar- unparliamentary words it's a long standing tradition actually but if you just look at the list of words that have been added to it it's laughable the opposition is fuming saying that it amounts to censoring their criticism of the government in the house and they pointed out rightly so that bjp leaders themselves have used these words on the floor of the house in the past now the lok sabha speaker actually called a press conference this evening and said that no words have actually been banned and that this list is in keeping with a long tradition of compiling unparliamentary words which can be expunged by the speaker so the speaker ultimately has to decide the chair of the house has to decide whether these listed words should be expunged or not but they are listed as unparliamentary government sources were so upset about the backlash today that they whatsapp journalists to say that this is the bankrupt politics of the opposition it's a hue and cry uh, that's being made without any facts uh in place but let's listen in first to what the speaker of the lok sabha had to say main yahan batana chahta hu ki jo debate aur charcha mein jo log charcha kar rahe hain wo manne sadasyon ko bhi ya anya jo sansad ke darwaze jinhone nahi dekhe wo bhi jo charcha debate kar rahe hain jinko sansadiya paramparaon ki jankari nahi hai unko ye jankari honi chahiye kisi shabd ko ban nahi kiya hai us samay ke sandarbh mein जब जब भी आवश्यक हुआ तो विलोपित किया है और कोई भी मान्य सदस्य को उस समय जब उनको उनके भाषण की प्रति दी जाती है उस समय उनको कोई आपत्ति हो चाहे सत्ता पक्ष हो चाहे प्रतिपक्ष हो कि आपने मेरे उन शब्दों को विलोपित किया है वो विलोपित करना उचित नहीं था किस कारण से किए अगर वह सचिवालय के अंदर कोई नोटिस देते हैं तो सचिवालय उस नोटिस पर उनको जवाब देता है Well joining us on NDTV now is Derek O'Brien the leader of the Trinamool Congress's parliamentary party in the Rajya Sabha uh, Derek O'Brien great to see you back on TV after a long time what did you think of the Lok Sabha speaker yes. saying that well nothing's technically banned i mean these words are there they've been compiled but and if you use them they can be expunged but it's not necessarily that they would be I'm not getting into a spat with one of the presiding officers let's leave the presiding officer out this is a much more bigger issue parliament is being undermined for the last many years i'm glad this issue has come up so we can remind the young people of india what is happening i'm going to put out four or five facts to show you how parliament has is being parliamentarians ha, we are not even given a chance to express ourselves words is just one number one has the prime minister answered a question on the floor of rajya sabha in the last 7 years no average time to pass a bill in indian parliament as per the last monsoon session we are passing bills at an average of 9 minutes a bill 27 bills passed farm bills not only i members of other parties had asked for a vote before the bill is passed even if one member asks for a vote in writing you must get the vote you all saw what happened you all saw what happened the bull, the bills were the bills were bulldozed it's been 3 years these are not just numbers and facts it's been 3 years the lok sabha don't have a deputy speaker bjp have 300 mps in lok sabha so these words are just one small part of it there's a much bigger picture parliament will be made important parliament will be it's it's like you know democracy is a shell of democracy to show you have a parliament but nothing dem- democratic is happening there so this, you're saying that one, this is one a, last point, a, a, a larger pattern in one, undermining just one parliamentary point, democracy please, yeah. you're saying parliamentary democracy is being undermined parliament is an institution I, absolutely let me give you one real example the last session of parliament was the budget session of parliament what did the opposition want to discuss the opposition wanted to discuss price rise of essential commodities and fuel was the discussion allowed there were 10 12 opposition parties was the discussion allowed no i challenge you this discussion will not even be allowed in this session of parliament 
Second, the opposition, the opposition wanted to discuss Pegasus for internal security earlier. Was it allowed? No. Now they'll have an all-party meeting in a few days, and Mr. Prime Minister will come there for three minutes and 30 seconds, click, 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 and he'll make one statement to say, any issue the government is ready to discuss. We are willing to have a discussion on any issue. I humbly appeal and urge the presiding officers of the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha with all respect and humility to protect parliament. Sirs, we need you to protect parliament. Otherwise, how many sleepless nights will you be having like this? But can I ask you, what did you think of the, the words that have been compiled in this new list of un, so-called unparliamentary language? I mean, does that tell you a story in itself? Like, you can't say Jumla GV, you can't say Snoopgate, you can't say, you know, hypocrisy and ashamed and abused. I, what does that tell you, the choice of words in this list? You see, no, see, I... I really think, you know, that it's been on the social media all day. I, I haven't been on television uh, for the last six, seven months because there's a lot of other work to do. But I thought today was a day I really need to get on to television because it is beyond these words. It is way beyond these words. The, in, the, I mean, look at the scrutiny of bills. Look at the ordinances. Ordinances, as we learned in our school civics books, for emergency legislation. What's the track record now for ordinances to be passed, ordinances for bills? In earlier governments, you go back 20 years, 30 years, 15 years, for every 10 bills passed, one or two was an ordinance. Why? Because it's an emergency ordinance. You know what Mr. Modi and Mr. Shah have done to, for ordinances? More than four out of every 10 bills passed, four are ordinances. Parliamentary standing committees are a joke. This, this is bordering on the elected autocracy. I, I really tell you, but, but, from the 18th of July to the 12th, 20, uh, there's no use complaining and sitting here on a television studio. 12th of, uh, 18th of uh, July to 12th of August, we're going to give it back to this, this Mr. Modi and Shah who are trying to push a knife through the heart of Indian democracy, through the soul of parliament. Right. We have to give it to them hard. We we'll right. come at them hard every day every day Derek O'Brien you're making a bigger point here about Parliament and the institution of Parliament thanks very much for joining us on NDTV today thank you thank you well joining us now Priyanka Chaturvedi member of Parliament from the Shiv Sena Raghav Chadda member of Parliament from the Aam Aadmi Party Kalikesh Singh Dio who has been a member of Parliament uh, from the BJD is also with us uh, Priyanka Chaturvedi to you first do you agree with what Derek O'Brien was saying that this is not actually a one-off thing that this is a bigger issue with how uh, you know parliament itself is being undermined absolutely i'm quite in agreement with what he has been saying so uh, there was this meme i shared which was Karin to kare kya, bole to bole kya. if we do something we are suspended if we say something we now stand to get expunged in the parliamentary records i think this is a very sad precedent to have where you are uh, undermining democracy and the role of the opposition every single day and we have seen this happening, whether uh, ordinances that uh, Derek was talking about, whether it's parliamentary discussions that we were speaking about, where uh, the farm bills, etc., they were forced to retract because they did not have adequate discussions, or whether, uh, you know, taking calls unilaterally. So since dictatorial is now an uh, uh, unparliamentary word, I'll call it authoritarian. Authoritarian uh, regimes will always continue to dictate how things should be working. But we are here, we in opposition, India has a strong opposition we will continue to fight this out and this is a long battle which we have been fighting and con uh, are committed to continue fighting and I, I find this extremely ridiculous that everyday usage words like hypocrisy uh incompetence then uh talking about fudging data etc has all now become unparliamentary which I was, is extremely I was actually important. quite amused as i was asking Derek o'brien as well raghav chadda i was amused by the words that were chosen to be unparliamentary uh, and I thought that tells a story in itself, you know, from Jumla GV, Shakuni, Dictatorial, Tana Shahi, Jai Chand, Vinash Purush. I mean, uh, you know, th the words that have been chosen for this list are, you know, quite something. Look, there is one positive thing to this list and there is one negative thing to this list. The positive thing is that the government is 
very well aware is alive and cognizant of the fact that these are the very exact words that aptly and accurately describe the functioning and policies of this government that's the positive side of it the negative side of it is that it shows that our government is fearful of facing the truth you know just how an ugly person blames the mirror a bad workman blames his tools the government is blaming these words used by the opposition let me highlight two very important things to you nidhi first is that article 105 of the indian constitution gives complete and absolute freedom of expression and speech to the parliamentarians in fact article 1052 goes on to say that a member of parliament cannot even be proceeded against in any court of law for words spoken inside the chamber of the house that is there is absolute freedom a special privilege over and above the freedom of expression and speech that is given to an indian citizen furthermore powers and privileges are given to mps today with this gag order 1052 of the indian constitution stands diluted which can't possibly be done but they have done the impossible number 1 number 2 there are some set checks and balances in the house there are two mechanisms through which dignified conduct is ensured one is the good sense of the mps and the second is the control that is exercised by the presiding officer if there is anything that is und- undignified or indecent it can very well be expunged there is no need to impose this list of this laundry list of words these checks and balances have been working absolutely fine there is no need to tinker with it and and therefore i appeal to the government of india a and the lok sabha secretariat thereby a to repeal this list immediately and the second constitute a committee of members of parliament from all political parties let there be a healthy discussion within the committee and they will perhaps come out with this list if we go at this rate that day is not far away nidhi when a list of words that can be used an exhaustive list of words that can be used and used alone in the house will be issued and all other words that do not find mention in that list will be deemed those unparliamentary those are the words those are the words from priyanka's meme that she tweeted which by the way priyanka was very funny and i'm going to play that out later but kalikesh uh, you know what did you think of you know when the lok sabha speaker came out and said Uh, you know hello we're not banning anything this is not an order this is just a compilation of words is that splitting hairs look i like om birla i think he's, a, he's an old friend of mine and obviously uh, there is a list which comes out every year uh, you know which which categorizes uh, what what is termed as unparliamentary and uh, to be said in parliament and big sponged but i think the list that you're putting out on a television is taking it a bit too far i mean they've gone to a ridiculous uh, level where common no, uh, words which are commonly used in parliamentary language especially for an opposition to be used against the government you know they they banned it outright you know but it's the english language take a thesaurus if somebody bans corrupt call them a thief there are ways to get around it i, I don't think it's such an issue that uh, as as derek was saying it's, you know, it's the end of democracy i don't think it's that serious i think you can easily get around it in fact the the opposition should get together and get around it and put the speaker and the parliamentary affairs minister on a spot here i think there's there's a issue to be had in parliament here you know uh, just the fact that they ban some words can't stop democracy well uh, okay so you're saying it's an exaggeration to say that i think the bigger point that derek o'brien was trying to make uh, was was a sort of a pattern of things that parliament is seeing over the last few months and uh, and by the way i think only shashi tharoor will probably succeed with using that this or <laughs> to get around those words unfortunately he wasn't available today but but uh, mr pkd nambiar is joining us he's a an analyst and a supporter of the bjp mr nambiar i know you support the bjp but surely even you think that this list is absurd absolutely i i must say you that the long list i am of an opinion that of course there is uh, definitely there should be some kind of a better decorum uh, in uh, both in our assemblies and the parliament the mps are our role models because we as we say that the people whom the, the people elect uh, them and they are supposed to be the role model and we live in a all our parliament uh, uh, activities are live telecasted and at times we see that the way our mps or our mlas in assemblies how they behave which definitely do hurt 
नॉट ओनली जस्ट द सेंटिमेंट्स ऑफ द पीपल और समटाइम्स दे फील दैट यार किसको हमने चुनकर भेजा है सो आई थिंक एज फार एज दैट इज कंसर्न देयर शुड बी सम काइंड ऑफ अ डेकोरम विद रिलेटेड टू लैंग्वेजेस बट द लिस्ट व्हिच आई बिलीव Uh, is too uh, far fetched and i think some of those uh, words which are mentioned is something which is commonly used in our uh, daily discourse and i think and i i also feel that it is not just the word how you speak that word is also equally important there are so many words in our indian languages which you can say that the real meaning of that word may be right but the way you speak that it is not just a plain english language and when most importantly i think uh, priyanka ji and uh, uh, raghav is both are M- mps from the rajya sabha you, you, the only thing is that we are all in the national television debating and discussing in the afternoon onwards is all about that english and hindi words there are i think there all, are loads of hindi words there are almost 14 or yeah, languages yeah yeah there, there are loads of them i mean they are actually they're, they're funny if it wasn't so funny but priyanka chaturvedi correct so how do you so, so we were all debating about gadha gadhe ko tamil mein kya kehte hain aur malayalam mein kya kehte hain even punjabi mein kya kehte hain so i think uh, they it requires a somewhat tuning but making this as a political statement is that really far fetched the mps of today should discuss this in the parliament there is a we are a democratic country there is a an om birla is okay uh, okay let me, let me get priyanka chaturvedi yeah. back into this no, no, no. Uh, uh, first, yeah. firstly i am yeah. so happy that finally mr nambiar and i agree on one point that they have stretched the number the words that they've chosen way too far they, you did not need as many words as they've put in there so thank you so much mr nambiar for at least admitting that secondly i want to tell him that kabhi kabhi jab log television dekhte hain kehte hain humne kinko chunkar bheja hai वो रातों रात बीजेपी में भी चले जाते हैं और वो गंगा नहा लेते हैं दैट इज ऑल्सो अ फैक्ट द थर्ड पॉइंट आई लाइक टू मेक टू यू इज वेरी वेरी सिंपल मिस्टर नाम्बियर व्हेन यू से कॉन्टेक्ट आई विल I will I will make a statement to you and you tell me what in that did you find offensive I will say ye sarkar jhoote vaadon pe aayi thi aur ab garibon ke liye ghadiyali aansu baha rahi hai to ye sarkar jo kaam kar rahi hai wo bhrashtachar aur corruption se ke ke mamle mein jana jata hai Now you tell me corruption has been removed, bhrastachar has been removed, ghadiyali asu has been removed, and so has jhoot vade, jhoote, jhoote vade. Even drama has been removed. You can't Now say you drama. Now you tell me, even in our school when we were studying as children, jhoote baat, jhooti baat karna. Even our teachers used to tell us that we were not censored for that. You are censoring us for that. It remember, it reminds me of days during the British Raj when anyone who was jailed, any freedom fighter who was jailed. every single letter that he used to send out to his family was censored you're in the emergency which you'll keep bringing every time every time we have a discussion about democracy were words were censored so there is a declared emergency which we all know about which we keep continue to condemn and there's an undeclared emergency which uh, elk advani ji warned us about and i think we are living that uh, entire idea of undeclared emergency by the way i want to just play out a quickly a bites package that we've put together of some of the things that bjp mps and ministers have said in parliament in the past and i think a lot of that would be expunged going by this list today let's listen in shakuni ki dusht chalon ne rajya ke adhikari ko rajya se bahar kar diya tha adhyaksh ji yadi ek manthara aur ek shakuni ram aur yudhishthir jaise mahapurushon ko satta se bahar kar sakte hain to hamare khilaf to kitni mantharaye aur kitne shakuni kar diye psu disinvestment scam gayab hai are jinka dhindora peet ke chunav mein gaye the नरसिंह राव एपिटोम ऑफ करप्शन की चार्जशीट निकाल कर चुनाव में गए थे मुझे वो दिन याद है दिल्ली में दंगों के बाद अगर कांग्रेस न होती तो दशकों तक करप्शन को संस्थागत बनाकर नहीं रखा जाता वी सॉ दैट व्हेन वी अनलिस्ट दिस लार्जर एवेन्यूज ऑफ इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी दैट न्यू एरियाज एंड मच बिगर एरियाज एज फार एज करप्शन एंड ग्राफ्ट आर कंसर्न सडनली स्टार्ट So these are just some of the things from you know Narendra Modi to Atal Bihari Vajpayee, Sushma Swaraj, Arun Jaitley. All these words would have been expunged from their speeches. But Raghav Chadha, the bigger point though, I think that Derek O'Brien first made and Priyanka Chaturvedi has taken that forward, is the question of what is happening within Parliament itself. You've just come as a member of Parliament uh, uh, yourself, and you'll see it now. But we systematically see bills being pushed through without enough discussion and debate. uh you know there is a brute majority that the government has and it's using that uh increasingly it does appear that pa- the process of parliament you know seems to be um symbolic more than anything else no absolutely and nidhi i'm <coughs> of course yet to attend my maiden session which is going to commence on the 18th of this month 
but as a keen observer of parliamentary proceedings i can certainly tell you that the attempt of this government is to weaken the opposition and bulldoze every legislation and when you are playing these old clips the the one thing that did come to my mind is the bjp of the atal uh, bihari vajpayee's era where the members of the opposition were empowered where the members of the opposition were treated at the same pedestal were given the same power respect as those sitting on the treasury benches but today the attempt is to unarm the opposition members and even rob off rob them of of the words that they used to describe the policies of the government that's point number 1 point number 2 is that even harmless innocuous words as, as you have just pointed out have been included in this gag order and the one question that does certainly come to my mind nidhi is that now when words like corruption have been included in this list does that mean that the indian parliament cannot legislate on acts of corruption or prevention of acts of corruption now words like black marketing have been included in this gag order does that mean that the indian parliament cannot legislate to curb black marketing words like criminal and crime have been included in this list does that mean that we cannot legislate on the crpc and other acts of crimes or to prevent these acts of crimes etc i mean these are fundamental questions that as a young parliamentarian then come to my mind and this attempt again nidhi is to weaken uh, uh, the 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 parliamentary structures and and you know the up, up till now the judiciary was attacked the executive were attacked the media was attacked now even the legislature is being attacked and being systematically destroyed and as a young mp who is going to attend his first uh, session as as the youngest in the house of elders i personally feel uh, that you know this 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 is this is a uh, you know a system that needs to be sort of put an end to and therefore the, it is incumbent upon this government to now restore some confidence in the members of the opposition as well as the people of india yeah, and I... and you know this this attempt by this government to uh, you know bulldoze uh, the, uh, their legislations to work through these ordinances etc is as derek rightly pointed out it's they're stabbing the very heart of indian democracy so kalikesh i mean do, don't you i mean uh, you know your party isn't exactly the opposition and it's not the government but you don't see uh, a bigger problem here where you know things are literally being bu- bulldozed through parliament look uh, i've spent 10 years in opposition and every time in opposition you always face an uphill task about trying to get your word in whether it was the congress government in the 2009 14 period or 14 to 19 with the bjp government uh it it is certainly i think the list and a lot of the activities which we've seen in assembly and parliament of late are undermining democratic processes uh, undermining the political establishment as a whole when when and when the executive well, of of which the government is a part of undermines the opposition it undermines the parliament it undermines the political class as a whole and th- this is a serious problem you know it, it it exists i've spoken many times about it but the fact is it also smacks of a of a weakening of of a weak position with the opposition there is no reason why the opposition should get together and ensure that they speak these very words every day for the next two sessions or three sessions until the parliament and the government and the speakers allowed to function properly it's just a way of pushing right back you've got to push back as an opposition all right i i have to leave it that priyanka did you want to quickly say something i saw no, you i yeah. just want to i just want to reassure kalikesh that the opposition will push back <laughs> and as much as the responsibility it is of the government to ensure democratic processes continue the opposition will continue to fight for democracy and constitution to prevail <laughs> with the thesaurus yeah. in their hands with the, with the, with the, ask shashi tharoor to help you by the way I'm going to just play out the meme. I couldn't resist the meme that Priyanka Chaturvedi tweeted because we thought that was a fun note to end on. Have a look. अगर हम करें तो करें क्या बोले तो बोले क्या? वाह मोदी जी वाह 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 <laughs> I have to leave it at that lots of reactions on social media today on ku we've got rupak basu who says i think it's a good step because politicians are prone to using bad language uh, deepthi says that this is against democracy adarsh says it's a new dictionary for a new india mohit says it's a curb on the freedom of expression and the freedom of speech whatever it is it's bound to be an interesting parliament session from monday see you then good night